also worked so to get Dark Sound Capture working better. So things like TeamSpeak, Wiltovarka Voice Chat, and Steam Voice should all work. But I couldn't test it because it kept locking up on my system. I think it's the AT drive, so I don't know why. Okay, so basically, what was the stream mixer before the my Google Summer of Project? Uh, it was basically slow, it took a lot of time, and it still wouldn't work fast. And every time it ran, it needed at least four context switches, one to Alsastat, it was separate, and one back, then also one for the timer to wind server, and I think it's one more for Elsa again. It was also inefficient because the secondary sound buffers could directly interface with the sound driver and when it does that, it keeps a lock. So it had to fight the lock with the mixer. So it was also CPU time starved. That was because it was horribly complex. It could both mix and unmix data and throw all data away. So that was really not a good idea. I mean, it's nice to have uh, unmixing data, but I don't think that's really a good idea. Okay, it also didn't work well with Elsa. Because of some limitations with Elsa, I had, I couldn't really work with the driver. And of course, the lock contention, I just talked about it. And all the format com format conversions from m mono to stereo and from different sample weights to the primary sample weight were all done in the mixer itself. So that really took so a lot of the CPU time. Also, there were some bugs that prevented emulation acceleration from working correctly, so it wasn't really usable, especially for Elsa. So, what have I done in the Google Sum of Code and beyond that? Okay, first I tried to, I tried to optimize it a little and try to make it do as little context switches as possible by removing the WinMM timer. Uh, that's the timer that direct sound uses to get all the time needed for the mixer. Okay, so I tr also tried to slim it down, so I took out the code that d did the unmixing and throw data away, etc. So now it only mixes the data once. This makes sure it gets enough CPU time, and it also makes it more ELSA compatible, because ELSA couldn't really throw data away. I also made sure that when a secondary buffer tries to get some data that is ready for the mixer buffer, it gets put in a read write lock, so it can still work together with the mixer and work on the same data at the same time. But if you try to do something like stopping a buffer, it would you get the exclusive lock, so it couldn't really lock up like that. Also, as a and that allowed me to do the format conversion by the caller, so when it someone delivers data, it's done by the Kali, so the mixer is really free to do anything it likes. It doesn't really have to do that much anymore. And I also try to fix as many emulation acceleration bugs as possible, which makes it possible to use both Vinyls and OSS for capture and playback. Okay, what still needs to be done to all the dark sound stuff is mostly positional audio. That's like when you some games use that, then you have direct sound that says you are here, you have something there, you have something there, and you must decide for yourself how you play the sounds in the left speaker and the right speaker. So that's also related to the 4 and 5.1 channel support. So, and also the 24 and 32 bits audio samples. I th believe that Windows Media Player uses them, but direct sound currently disables it because it doesn't know how to handle it. So then you have also the three-dimensional effects like chorus, echo, etc. And dark sound, I believe, currently has no support for that at all. So that needs to be worked on. There are also some bug fixes. I believe games like Halo don't work well because of crash, because of the new changes I made. That needs to be done. And I need to optimize mixing some more because right now it j it clamps every. Uh, how do you explain it? Basically, you have a 16-bit format, and the secondary is 16-bit as well. So when it d puts in data and adds it to the primary buffer, it needs to be sure it doesn't 
overflow and then gets a different value than the maximum. So that is really, right now it does a check every time it adds something, but I think it would be better if you have a bigger buffer, put all the data in there, also put in a primary, and then check for the clamping. So that would allow it to factorize it and still be optimized. And it would be even better because almost between 40 and 60% of the time in direct sound is spent in the mixer. And that's why I want to use 24 bit internally. So if I do that, then 24 bit is really 32 bit with only 24 bits used. So then I can use the upper eight bits to for the overflow handling. And that's about all I have to say. So are there any questions? Well, I believe it does because you can easily just bit shift it from 16 bit to 24 bit, and then it's not really expensive my operation. My experience is that in direct CD there are some braces uh, for different compilations where that is like fixing up the universal buffer, even a single bit shift line. Yeah. It causes uh, noticeable performance differences. Yes, but we already have a lot of performance loss in direct sound because it already has to convert all data to a uh, format that the primary buffer understands. So a oh, so small, already, yes, of course it's quite cheap to just yeah, that's why I do it. So then I can just, so then I can just add all data from all the buffers and then check for clamping. So yeah. it's a lot cheaper for me then because then I believe it could be factorized and then it's a lot faster. Any other questions? Have you seen um, a system or a tool that the program use for making the buffer better? Because I mean, we have a direct sound minimum and there are no effects like one at 10 out or one for two and that's a problem right now. Uh, well, the only real drivers I've used are Wine OSS and Wine Alsa. The rest I don't touch. And I believe they should be removed because. <laughs> oh, and, and Max, of course, but I can't touch that. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Uh, uh, I already moved to the level because first the format conversion was done in a mixer set. And I move that so that it <coughs> is done by the caller that delivers the data. And that's usually the game. So it suffers a tiny performance loss, but sound will always work correctly. Anything else? So is there any obvious, um, so what you're saying is that wine should not support any distributed sound system at all. Um, so is there an obvious solution path forward? What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, and there are people who use wine, and they use ESD, as bad as it is, to deliver their remote sound. Yeah. Well, I believe the ESD driver mostly works, but I haven't really tested it. Right. right. And do you know? Well, is there, I mean, ev everything I hear is that ESD is crap, arts is crap, and it's all crap. What's not crap? I just go on. Maybe NAS. Which one? Maybe oh, NAS. NAS oh, for audio. 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 Yeah. For no. the, uh, I know. Somebody mm. wanted to rip it out too, and then people s s com start complaining that oh, we have to use it for. Uh, um. Can I answer, please? Yeah. Basically, direct sound has two ways. The first way is accelerated, and the other way it basically goes to the wave out system. And the second way doesn't care about which driver you have, whether it's NAS or ESD or anything. It even works on Windows. That's how I got the driver working on Windows. So, from ESD and NAS, I know they have no acceleration anyway, so it doesn't really matter for them. So, just so I understand, so you have direct sound, and then that sits on top of WinMM? <coughs> well, it first tries to do a 
dirty message that tries to get the interface, and if it gets that, acceleration will work, else it will f fall back to wave out. Well, it shouldn't break with all the drives, but I haven't really tested with it. Yeah, I believe it works. But I, c I haven't never been able to make NAS work myself, so I don't know for sure. Well, if it works by playing a simple sound, it should also work for a direct sound. Yes, but... Yes, but that doesn't really matter because it could... St because only I in case you use OSS directly in the kernel, it will matter because ELSA usually allows plex multiplexing anyway, so you can have multiple streams. So ESD can have a stream and also directly can have a stream. Yes. One application is started where well, ESD is started because of the background song from the GNOME mixer. You can't use ISA. It doesn't work because the, the mixer was not configured. Out of the box. And that's it works, okay, when you configure it manually. It it will work. Yeah. But it was not configured out of the box. Probably so a bug in distribution bug that yeah. 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 distribution bug. Basically bugs. there there's OSS in Linux and if you use ESD on that, it would grab the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And no other sound can play, even if you have, a, even is it, if it's a also driver, because it uses kernel mode emulation. So then it takes up the whole device, and you can use it. But in general, most distribution nowadays all ship Elsa with a recent new version that has DMX by default, and that allows you to have as many streams as you like. So how can I emulate the code? Uh, it has an option. There are two ways. One is the kernel mode, and then it needs to have exclusive access. And the other is by starting your device with AOSS in front of it. So that tries to grab things like open, etc., and then reroute everything from the OSS to ELSA directly. But real ELSA is really better.